Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. So this is the third and final talk in the uh, series about edX spaces. Uh, so I, I just like Utsav, I will also uh, apologize. I'm, I'm not a specialist in this area. But I will try to, uh, in this talk, uh, define uh, a general edX space. So uh, Utsav defined for us the affinoid edX spaces. And I will define a general edX spaces. And I will move on to a uh, lot of examples, as promised by Utsav. OK, so uh, let me get to it. So. Uh, uh, in, in, in yesterday's lecture, we saw that we had these spaces, spa A, A plus, attached to any Huber pair A, A plus. And uh, to that, we have a pre-sheaf. So if, if you call this X, which, has, which, is, which is a topological space, to this we have a pre-sheaf of complete topological uh, rings. And uh, if this is a sheaf, uh, then AA plus is called a sheafy Huber pair. And uh, Utschop gave a, a, a theorem, uh, he, he quoted a theorem uh, which said when uh, this pair is actually sheafy. So in particular, if A is discrete, then uh, we are in the world of schemes, and then it's sheafy. Uh, if A is adic, then we are in the world of formal schemes. It's again uh, sheafy. And uh, uh, Kiran told us that when A is perfectoid, it's also sheafy. And there is another criterion, uh, when uh, another case when uh, this is a sheafy Huber pair, when uh, a is a strongly noetherian, so we will come to that. Okay, so uh, probably Utsab also mentioned that. So yeah, maybe I, I'll uh, skip that. Okay, so uh, these spaces are uh, uh, then locally ringed spaces with a valuation on each of the local rings, right? That's this is all we saw yesterday. So okay, so how do we? So these are like affine spaces. For adic spaces, how do we construct general adic spaces from th that? So uh, uh, I'll I first uh, define this category. So nu uh, is the category of uh, triples. So x, o x, uh, Where uh, this X is a topological space uh, OX is a sheaf of complete topological rings. on x, and thirdly, uh, this vx uh, is a valuation on the stock oxx, which is a local ring. OK. So uh, these are the objects in my category. And I have to tell you what are the morphisms. So the morphisms are uh, so f from x to another triple y will be a morphism of uh, locally ringed spaces. So this means that uh, we have uh, maps from uh, OY of F inverse U to uh, 
Ox of u for each open set u in X. And uh, these maps have to be uh, continuous because our rings are now uh, topological rings. And uh, there is one further condition, uh, which is these maps should be compatible with the evaluations on these talks. So which means that uh, there is uh, a commutative diagram uh, like this. Oh, oops, sorry. So, and there is this valuation V f of x, which takes us to gamma x. So, this is the value group, and here I have another valuation. And there should be a map like this, such that this uh, diagram commutes. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so uh, this is a sheaf of complete uh, topology. So this is built in, right? So I'm saying that uh, OX is a sheaf of complete topological rings. So OX of U is a complete topological ring for all U. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, this is exactly what happens in the case of SPA, right? Uh, so, so I think uh, this is built into the definition. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so uh, this is a lot of data, but uh, uh, we have seen all of this for for the uh, affinoid spaces, which are these paths, right? Okay, so uh, then. Uh, we can define a general adic space in a very uh, yes, yes, yes. So the valuations have to be uh, so O X X will have a topology because it's a direct limit. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, so. Uh, Valuations on OX. Okay, so now uh, uh, an adic space is an object in uh, in uh, in new. So that means it's a triple. Such that. Uh, it, th this definition is just like uh, schemes, so such that uh, X has an open covering of uh, some UIs, uh, where uh, if I look at uh, each UI, uh, restrict the structure shift to this UI, and uh, the valuations on, on the stocks of UI. So these are isomorphic to spas of Schiffy Hoover pairs. Okay, so this is an open covering. And, and, and this isomorphism is in, the, in this category V, which we have already defined. Okay, so, uh, so uh, all this is abstract. What, what I'm saying is that uh, an adic space is a, a locally topologically ringed space along with those valuations, such that locally it's 
it's like spas for Shifi Huber pairs, right? Okay, and uh, and uh, morphisms of eddic spaces. Are just morphisms in mu in in in, in this uh, category uh, v maybe no yeah it, it may not be a finite we will see examples where it's not finite yeah okay uh, and so so uh, spa of a a plus for a Shifu Huber pair is called an Affinoid eddic space. Okay, so uh, these are exactly like the affine schemes for algebraic geometry. Okay, so uh, since I'm an algebraic geometer, uh, instead of looking at schemes, uh, we like to look at the functor of points of schemes. So I'll just quickly uh, say, uh, that uh, what what the functor of points is, this can be of course done in any category. But what will what this will do is this will help us uh, uh, sort of give examples of eric spaces as as uh, 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 functor as uh, things that will represent certain functor, functors. Okay, so. Uh, So if X is an addict space, uh, then X actually defines a functor from this category of addict spaces, which I'll denote by A, D, two sets. And what is this? So uh, for any addict space Y, the set uh, X of Y is just uh, all morphisms from Y to X in this category. This is uh, exactly like the functor of points of a scheme. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so AD is the category of eddic spaces. Okay, so uh, then uh, we have a proposition uh, which I won't prove, but it's uh, it's not very hard to prove. So the functor uh, which takes a Shifi Huber pair A A plus to the affinoid eddic space power of a plus is uh, is a fully faithful functor uh, it's a contravariate functor but it's a fully faithful functor which means uh, uh, that uh, in fact the uh, morphisms between spa of a plus and spa of b b b plus are exactly the morphisms between Huber pairs AA plus and, uh, uh, sorry, BB plus and AA plus. Okay, so. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The functor, uh, uh, yeah, maybe. The functor spa from uh, the category of. Of Shifi Huber pairs to addict spaces is fully faithful. In fact, uh, more is true. Uh, so the uh, homomorphisms in the category of addict spaces from um, 
x to uh, power of a a plus is actually uh, uh, equal to the uh, homomorphisms of Huber pairs from a a plus to O x plus of x. Sorry. Right? So, okay, this might seem abstract, but this says, says a lot. So instead of looking at uh, morphisms of adic spaces, whenever the target space is affinoid, we can just look at uh, morphisms between Hoover pairs, right? Which is just a ring homomorphism, which is a, a much more uh, uh, familiar object for us. Yeah, so we have not uh, defined OX plus, but the valuations will determine OX plus. So basically, at the level of stocks, uh, this valuation of uh, uh, a section of OX plus should be less than or equal to one. So that will determine. <coughs> So yeah, maybe I'll make a comment here. So I think there was a choice involved in the definition of an abstract adic space where either you can uh, give this data of OX plus or you can give the data of valuations. But those two are equivalent and this is slightly easier to deal with algebraically. So this was taken as the preferred choice. Okay, so after all this abstractness, let's actually get down to some examples. Um, okay, so uh, I'll give you a set of examples. Maybe uh, the first, uh, so the first set will be uh, for discrete rings. So the, the model is Z. So these will be adic spaces over spa of ZZ. And the other will be, uh, so these are over QP. So this is over a non-Archimedean field. And we will see that there is a dichotomy uh, here. And I think that uh, uh, these can be related to the, uh, uh, related to each other using fiber product, but uh, that doesn't always exist. And I won't talk about that anyway. So, okay, so the first thing will be the final object. So final object in any category is an object to which there is a unique morphism from any object of that category. And any guesses what the final object in the category of adic spaces will be? So as, uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, the final object in the category of adic spaces is uh, uh, spa of uh, Z comma Z. And uh, this has uh, three types of points. Eta, which is the generic point, so the closure of this point is the entire space. This corresponds to the trivial valuation on Z, which is continuous because Z is discrete as a ring, right? We're, we're taking the discrete topology on Z. Uh, then there are these eta P's, which are just the periodic valuations. And lastly, there are the points SPs, which are obtained from the map to uh, FP, and uh, then taking the uh, trivial valuation on FP. Okay. Huh? Yeah, so, so, so these are closed points. And if you take the closure of eta P, you will get uh, eta P, SP. So this is easy to check. You can uh, just look at uh, the 
rational open sets that uh, were defined in the last lecture and check that this is the case. So there is a nice picture. So we have eta here and uh, we have let's say uh, eta 2 here and we have S2 here. Similarly, we have eta 3, S3, eta 4, oh, oops, sorry, uh, yeah, I mean uh, eta 5, 5 and so on. Okay, and, and uh, to see the closure, you, can, you just have to see the tree b below that, uh, uh, the subtree below that point. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Uh, this is uh, just the uh, trivial valuation. So it takes everything non-zero to one and the zero goes to zero. Okay, so, uh, but we are also interested in, uh, in, in, um, in uh, this uh, periodic case. So we will be looking at adic spaces over non-Archimedean fields, right? So, uh, so uh, the final object in that category will be something else. So let me define uh, that. So if uh, K is a non-Archimedean Field, uh, then uh, k k zero is uh, so this is the uh, set of so this is the valuation ring of k is uh, again a Schiffy Hoover pair and we can take a spa of k k zero which just has a single point. For instance, if you take k to be qp, then spa of qp zp will just have a single point. There is only one continuous valuation uh, from k to, uh, uh, from k with this valuation ring. So, uh, okay, so, uh, so using this, we define the adic spaces over k. So so uh, an adic space over k will be a morphism, basically in this uh, in the category of adic spaces, from x to spa of uh, k k. Right, so it will be an adic space along with a map to this guy. Which, uh, so we, we are looking at the category ab above this object, right? So that we are restricting. So this uh, this morphism is actually part of the data, and uh, mor morphisms in this category. Will be morphisms from uh, x to y such that uh, uh, they agree on spa of k, k naught. So this is the usual definition. And uh, so this forms a category and we, we write that category as adic spaces over k, add over k. Right? And uh, clearly, the, the final object here is spa k, k naught. So in, in, in adic spaces, this is the category that actually we are interested in because the, everything over z is kind of uninteresting. That's already dealt with in algebraic geometry. So I, 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 I guess, but uh, over qp, things are more interesting. So here, uh, the final object is spa of zz, whereas here it is spa of uh, qp zp. Here z has discrete topology. Okay, so then, uh, so now we will do something which is uh, not there in schemes. So uh, the closed unit disk, so we cannot talk about closed unit disks in, 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 uh, in the uh, category of schemes, but here we can. So first, uh, 
let us uh, see what this object will be. Over Z, so uh, so uh, we want uh, an adic space such that uh, its functor of points actually uh, recovers a plus. So basically, we want want an adic space X such that X of spa. A plus is actually A plus because A plus is the analog of the closed unit disk inside A, right? So how can we get that? So let's take um, Zx or Zt with uh, discrete topology. And uh, uh, the closed unit disk, so D over Z is spa of ZT, ZT. And you can check that uh, it actually satisfies this property because any uh, morphism from spa of A plus to spa of ZT, ZT will correspond to a morphism from uh, this Huber pair to a a plus right and here uh, the norm so so z t contains t right so the norm of t is actually less than one so uh, t has to go to something with norm less than one and that is exactly the elements those are exactly the elements a plus here so, so yeah so uh, basically this object represents this functor essentially. Uh, so this is uh, um, the right object for, right object uh, to consider as the uh, closed unit disk over uh, Z. So I'll write it here, so D, so here it will be uh, spa of ZT, ZT where ZT has discrete topology. Okay, so uh, this was not very interesting. So let's see what the candidate for the closed unit disk is over, uh, over QP. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, there is a inclusion of Huber pairs. And then there will be a map in the opposite direction, right? Yeah. Uh, no, so I, I think, uh, so the, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, right. So you are go, uh, saying uh, if you go mod uh, T. So then that will give us a map from spa of ZZ to here. Because it will be, it's a contravariant function, right? And uh, that will correspond to, I think, the trivial. Uh, uh, trivial valuation because uh, if you're killing T then everything else will be killed right no 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 the canonical inclusion is there for any any um, uh, yeah so the, there is always a map from uh, so, so, so any adic space is an adic space over uh, spa of ZZ because there is a uh, canonical map from Z to any commutative ring, right? That's uh, so, uh, yeah. 
maybe i didn't answer the question quite adequately well okay so uh, over um uh, over qp um we will consider the ring uh qp t so this is the restricted power series ring that uh, uh, Ochoa introduced. Basically, the coefficients go to zero uh, in this ring as n tends to zero. And uh, this has a uh, norm which is given by the supremum over all the uh, coefficients. So, sup norm. So basically, uh, norm of summation a n t power n supremum over n So of course, these are periodic norms. I'm not writing uh, p as a subscript, but uh, and uh, so this norm gives a topology on on, on this ring, right? And uh, uh, so you can see that uh, Q P T has the valuation ring and under this valuation Z P T. And this is a Schiffy Huber pair. Uh, and we can take the spa of this Huber pair. So D. Q P is spa of that Huber pair. Okay. Okay. So uh, now, uh, uh, so we have to kind of justify why why we are taking this as the uh, candidate for the closed unit disk over QP. So first of all, note that if we have a valuation in this space, then uh, since T is in A plus, we must have norm of T less than or equal to 1, right? So that, 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 this is kind of the radius of the disk. And uh, moreover, note that if we choose an element of uh, QP bar, uh, such that the norm of alpha is less than or equal to 1, then this defines a norm on uh, QPT. Uh, so basically, uh, by evaluation at alpha. So, uh, defines So, this is an element of uh, QP bar, which automatically has a norm. And uh, we see that uh, In fact, it's not hard to see that if alpha and beta are Galois conjugates of each other, then they define the same norm because uh, the uh, Galois action is by uh, isometries. So basically, uh, Q, uh, if, if, if you look at the unit disk uh, inside QP bar, and take the quotient by the uh, Galva group, uh, then this uh, injects inside our closed disk. So this is another justification for uh, our uh, uh, closed disk. In fact, uh, if you look at the rigid analytic space, associated to uh, uh, this 
affinoid ring, then I guess uh, these are all the points, or maybe there are transcendental points, but if you take, uh, instead of QP, if you take CP, then these will be all the points of uh, the regionality space. <laughs> However, uh, here we have more points. So some uh, uh, mysterious points, which are also called Gauss points. These are somehow the generic points of uh, sub-disks inside this disk. So uh, uh, choose uh, um, an alpha in QP bar uh, such that mod alpha is less than or equal to 1 and uh, a radius which is between 0 and 1. Okay, and let uh, B of alpha R be the set of all points in QP bar, uh, which are at a distance um, at most R from alpha. So this is the disk of radius R around alpha, right? So there is a point uh, in uh, this corresponding to that disk, which is called the Gauss point, which is obtained by so uh, the Gauss point of B alpha R is uh, given by the valuation so uh, the value uh, the val uh, norm of F will be uh, supremum over norm of f of beta for beta in this ball. And in fact, uh, if uh, r is non-zero, then uh, this uh, is clearly, uh, so not, not clearly, but this is not equivalent to any of these other uh, valuations. So this is a point which is kind of uh, special to addict uh, spaces and not there in rigid analytic spaces. So in fact, there are a lot of more, uh, there are uh, quite a few more points. So for instance, uh, there are points where T is infinitesimally smaller than one, but bigger than any other uh, uh, real number less than one. So those, so for that, so there is a classification of points of D of CP, not QP. Uh, for instance, it, it's, it's in Scholz's paper on perfect earth spaces uh, in uh, publications of IHES. So it's a beautiful uh, classification. But I think it's not uh, true for other general eddic spaces. So I won't discuss that. So here we will have a spa of QP T. ZPT, and you can check that uh, in the, so, so we have to check uh, that it actually uh, represents the correct functor. So, uh, so for that, I will sort of leave it as an exercise. So we introduce the category of addict spaces over a non-archimedean field K, right? So in that category, uh, uh, morphisms from spa of AA plus to DQP will exactly be A plus. So that's uh, that's. Uh, Oh yeah, yes, sorry, add QP. So that's exactly what happened in, uh, here also, right? Okay, uh, and any question? Uh, 
Uh, you get something new, yeah, yeah. Because see, uh, those elements may be transcendental over QP. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think not, maybe <laughs> these are actually, yeah. But anyway, maybe I, I won't uh, try to. Uh, any other questions? So again, everything over Z is kind of easy. So over Z, uh, let's take uh, Z T, the power series ring with uh, T addict topology. Then uh, the open unit disk D zero Z is spa of Z T Z T. So this is uh, an adic ring, and hence uh, it's uh, if you take uh, Z T Z T, that's a Schiffy Hoover pair, and the spa of that will be the open unit disk. So as a justification, let's see what is the uh, functor of points for this guy. Uh, no, no, sorry, sorry. So this is, uh, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm taking the power, uh, power series ring with the T adic topology. Topology on Z is discrete. And uh, then uh, uh, we, we uh, look at this power of Z T Z T. And uh, so uh, it can be shown. So let me uh, write this as an exercise that uh, so the maps to the open unit disk recovers the. Uh, so these are the topologically nilpotent elements of A. If uh, A is, uh, uh, so if A A plus is a complete uh, Schiffy Hoover pair. Okay, and uh, so. Uh, So topologically important that means powers of those elements uh, tend to zero in that topology, which means, uh, for instance, if you take the uh, uh, topologically important elements of C, those are exactly the uh, open unit disk inside C, right? So that, that's that's the right uh, analog for uh, the open unit disk. Okay, so. Uh, so here um, we have D zero T adic topology, right? Okay, so let's look at the more interesting case. So uh, let's uh, look at uh, QP. Now, so over QP, it's a little uh, more difficult to describe the open unit disk. Uh, so first, let's consider the ring uh, ZP, uh, ZP uh, T, power series ring, where we take uh, the PT adic uh, topology. And uh, then this is an adic ring, and uh, let's look at uh, X, which is spa of this guy. 
Okay. Uh, now, of course, uh, there is a map from uh, x to zp zp, it's power of zp zp. because uh, of the inclusion of Huber pairs. So ZP, ZP includes here uh, continuously. And uh, then uh, uh, we have a map of spas in the opposite direction, right? Okay, so uh, now what is this guy? This is actually a two element set. So one uh, element is the generic fiber. So that corresponds to the uh, pullback of the uh, trivial, sorry, sorry. So that, that corresponds to the periodic uh, norm on uh, ZP. So eta, so that uh, comes from the inclusion uh, ZP inside QP. And uh, I have S, uh, so this is the generic, fiber, uh, generic point, this is the special point. So this comes from the map uh, from ZP to FP, and then taking the trivial valuation on FP. Okay, so uh, these are the only possible uh, uh, valuations on uh, ZP, continuous valuations on ZP. And uh, so, uh, in fact, this point, uh, Eta is open. So uh, the singleton eta is actually the open set. So uh, so we have to, uh, so this is the only valuation where the norm of P is non-zero, right? So we can write it as the rational open set P over P. So which is uh, the set of all valuations in uh, that uh, adic space such that norm of P is less than or equal to norm of P, which is non-zero. So this condition is of course a tautology. This is the condition that we need, right? Okay, so this is a rational open set. So that means it is the spa of something, right? So in fact, it is the spa of QPZP, because uh, uh, if you look at uh, how we define uh, the uh, pre-sheaf OX, so uh, on this open set, if we call, call it U, OX of U will actually be QP. So with, uh, with OX plus being ZP. So this is spa of uh, this guy. So uh, we can now look at the, so this is the generic point. We can now look at the generic fiber of X, which will be an open set inside X because we are just pulling back an open set. So uh, X eta is the uh, right candidate for the open unit disk. Okay, so uh, maybe I can go over to this board. So D zero QP is X eta. And uh, there is a nicer way of writing X eta. So if, uh, uh, if we have a val norm in X eta, then uh, uh, see it restricts to the periodic valuation on ZP, right? So that means it is the valuation of P is non-zero. And uh, uh, in this ring, T is topologically nilpotent, right? So that means uh, norm of T power N goes to zero. So both these together would imply that uh, T power K is less than equal to, norm of T power K is less than equal to norm of P for some K greater than zero. So which means that uh, 
this guy is in x of t power k over p. So this is in this rational open set. And in fact, uh, this rational open set is affinoid, right? Any rational open set inside an affinoid is an affinoid. So this is an affinoid uh, space. And we can write x eta as the union of all these uh, spaces. So x eta will be equal to union over k equals 1 to infinity x of right and uh, in fact uh, so this condition uh, somehow tells us that this is the closed disk of radius uh, p to the 1 over k right so if we take the union of the closed disks of radius p to the 1 over k uh, norm of p to the 1 over k then we would uh, expect to get the open unit disk so that's what is happening here uh, so basically uh, the open unit disk is obtained by taking a, a union over larger and larger uh, open sets with open disks whose radius radii converge to 1. So that, that's the uh, uh, oh, generic fiber of spa of ZPT, ZPT. And moreover, note that uh, this is uh, infinite union of uh, affinoid adic spaces, which does not have a finite subcover, right? So uh, this open unit disk is not quasi-compact. And uh, so Utshab said that, in fact, affinoid uh, spaces are spectral, so they are quasi-compact. So this is the first example of an adic space which is not affinoid. So uh, this guy is not quasi-compact and hence not affinoid. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. So then uh, we will give the two most important examples probably, uh, at least in algebraic geometry, the affine line and the projective line. Okay, so uh, then uh, let's look at uh, the affine line, so A1. Did we start at, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so then maybe I, I'll describe the projective line because uh, the affine line is kind of easy to say what it is. So uh, P1, so over Z it's very easy. We take two copies of A1 and we identify uh, over uh, open uh, rational subsets where T is non-zero, but over QP, it's kind of interesting. We can do something which is uh, closer to topology. So we will take two closed unit disks and we will identify along the unit circle. So uh, consider D of QP, which is the closed unit disk, and uh, let uh, S1 QP be the subset such that uh, norm of t is equal to 1. So uh, note that uh, d of qp is pa of this ring, right? Uh, and uh, this is a plus, so norm of t is actually less than equal to 1, right? So uh, in fact, uh, this condition 
is equivalent to saying that uh, because uh, norm of t is anyway less than or equal to 1, right? So this is, so S1 QP is the rational open subset 1 over t, right? Which is the spa of QP Yeah, so, right, so I'm taking, uh, so I'm taking uh, all the uh, norms in the closed unit disk such that uh, norm t is uh, greater than or equal to 1. And uh, this is an affinoid uh, uh, space, which is a sparse of uh, this Huber pair. So then this is exactly a rational open subset, right? Uh, so <laughs> interestingly, it is an open subset, <laughs> which was quite shocking for me. But uh, <laughs> this actually lets us construct uh, P1 in a way that we construct spheres from disks, right? We identify two disks along the boundary circle to get a sphere. So basically, now uh, let us uh, take <coughs> uh, let us take two copies of uh, this disk. So P1 uh, will be the disjoint union of spa of uh, QP uh, T, ZPT, so that's a T1, uh, and spa of uh, T2, T2, uh, and we identify the rational open subsets uh, S1 inside both of them through the isomorphism phi from uh, phi from QP uh, T1, T1 inverse. given by phi of t, 1 is t2 inverse, right? So this gives an isomorphism of these two rings, which uh, sends uh, the zp to the, so, so it sends the a plus to a plus, and so this defines an isomorphism from the uh, boundary circle of the first disk to the boundary circle of the second disk. And uh, so, uh, so we have given an affine, uh, so we have uh, now constructed P1 as by gluing two uh, affinoid things. So of course, this automatically says that P1 is quasi-compact because it's uh, the union of two quasi-compact uh, uh, subspaces. And, uh, but however, of course, P1 is not uh, affinoid. So uh, for that, it's easy to check what the global sections of the structure sheaf on P1 is. So if P1 was affinoid, then uh, of course uh, we would have P1 would be, this is same as what we do uh, to prove something is not affine. So, uh, so we take the structure sheaf and we take the global sections of that. But uh, it can be shown, uh, so maybe I will not, so it's easy to see what the uh, global sections of the structure sheaf on P1 are using the sheaf condition.
So there will be sections on the disks which agree on the intersection. And from that condition, we, we will see that the only possibilities are the, uh, are the constants. So then uh, uh, P1 would have to be spa of QPZP, which is, of course, false. Okay, so maybe I will uh, stop here.